On today's Smoky Dave Presents, we're going to be making some absolutely off the chain smoked short ribs with new potatoes, bacon infused mushrooms, cooked in a rich garlic red wine reduction. Don't get left out with the short end of the rib. <laughs> we'll begin after we cut our uh, ribs into four separate ribs by washing it in a ice water and salt brine and then removing the silver skin that I just pointed to and any excess fat. I use a uh, very sharp uh, boning knife and there they are ready to go in the smoker so I'll meet you there. I'll be smoking these short ribs for the next two to two and a half hours. Something Mr. Ramsey failed to do. A little over two hours have gone by and the ribs are done and well smoked. However, I'm going to vacuum pack them and let them sit in the refrigerator overnight. And that will allow the smoke to deeply penetrate into the meat. We will braise these in this uh, cast iron frying pan, but we will finish it in a stainless steel roasting pan that is just almost out of frame there. So let's go over the ingredients list. Let's start out with uh, some either pancetta or thick sliced bacon. I'm using thick sliced bacon. Some pureed tomato. And that tomato has a little bit of basil and oregano in it, but you can just use pure puree out of a can. We're going to be making some beef broth. Uh, I don't have any good beef bone broth, so I'm just going to use this uh, kind of a bullion mix. It works very well and it's got a rich flavor. We'll be using two heads of garlic. We'll be using some button mushrooms, some new potatoes that have been sliced, and of course some inexpensive red wine. This was seven bucks. You don't need to spend a lot on the red cooking wine. And then for garnish we're going to be using some uh, green onions and parsley. And of course we'll need some sea salt and In the meat so let's get started on that. We'll cut the meat out of the uh, vacuum pack and we'll uh, season both sides with uh, ground pepper and salt. We'll put a little bit of olive oil in that frying pan and then we'll get to the braising stage. We're now ready to braise our ribs in the frying pan. But first we'll get the pan up to a high heat. Then we'll set the ribs in the pan and we'll want to braise all sides of the meat so that we seal in those delicious meat flavors. The meat is now braised and ready to go into the roasting pan. Now once we get it all in the roasting pan, we'll, I'll add a little bit of extra olive oil, just for good measure. And then we'll add in our tomato puree around the edges. You don't really want to get that on the meat directly. And once we get our tomato puree in, we're gonna then add our garlic just by slicing the garlic heads in half and placing the slice side down in the pan. This way the garlic will cook into the juices and then we'll squeeze out all that wonderful garlic into the final product. Now once we get our garlic all in there, we're going to add our red wine. And it's not critical to measure it. It's going to be about a cup. So we'll pour that in around the edges as well. And then after that, we're going to add our one cup of beef bouillon. Now once we have the bouillon mixed in with the wine and everything, we're going to heat the pan and reduce the liquid by half. We'll have it at a vigorous boil and get this reduced. And once it's reduced, as you can see here, we're going to add our potatoes. We'll add our potatoes around the edges wherever we can. It doesn't really matter if they sit on top of the meat 
or not at this point. And then we'll place the pan into the oven at 350 degrees for two and one half hours. Be sure to cover the pan. Now we're going to deal with our mushroom garnish. Take the pancetta or thick sliced bacon and we'll chop it into small pieces so they can render out that lard and get some nice crunchy bits. Now we're going to go ahead and just use the same pan that we braised our short ribs in. No sense in losing all that flavor. Now we'll get it on the stove and get it cooking down. And while that cooks down, we'll go ahead and start chopping our mushrooms. Now I'm using my Amarco cleaver here, and if you're interested in one of these, I'll leave a link down in the description. But I'm going to cut these mushrooms into basically just slice them in half or large chunks. If I have a larger mushroom, I might cut it into quarters. But that's the way I prefer it. And then we're going to just add that to the bacon cooking it for a small amount of time until those mushrooms have absorbed that delicious flavor. And then we'll put that off to the side and start dealing with the rest of our garnish. I'm going to chop up these green onions. And after I cut the ends off and get these chopped up, I'm also going to chop up some regular Italian parsley. Then we'll just throw the parsley and the onions together into a bowl to garnish our short ribs. The meat is done and it's time to take those ribs out and put it in our presentation plate. So I'll take each of the ribs out, set that over here. I'm also going to turn the stove on because we're going to continue to reduce that liquid a little bit more. Now once I have all of the ribs out, I'm going to take a sieve and we're going to pick up the four chunks of garlic, the four sliced pieces, and put them in the sieve so that we can press out all that delightful, thick, rich garlic that is now cooked in that liquid for two and a half hours. There's some real delicious flavor in there that's just going to infuse into that liquid when we turn it into a gravy. Take out the potatoes and we'll reduce that liquid down. Now here I am pressing out the, uh, the garlic with a large spoon. Just make sure that you scrape everything off the bottom of that sieve. You don't want to miss any of that flavor. Now we'll put our garnish, our mushrooms and pancetta on our ribs. And once that's done, We'll add some of that delightful gravy we just made with all that garlic flavor. We'll pour it on each rib separately because, as Gordon Ramsay would say, they deserve that respect. And then we'll put our final garnish of our parsley and chopped onions. And it's ready to eat. And that meat just falls off that bone. I wish I could tell you how delicious this is. But you'll have to make it yourself to find out.